his own people. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining in for BAYC 2021. By BAYC, I mean the Bugolowi Anya Youth Conference. And it's running starting today, the 25th of October to the 29th of October. And the theme this year is growing as one in Christ. Thank you for joining in. We shall be on all our social media platforms. All the information is on. And here is a program for BAYC. BAYC is on, guys. BAYC is on, Bugolobi Annual Youth Conference. Uh, today we have brought it to you at your places, you know, in your safety. And I hope that you are safe. I hope you are home. I hope you're taking care, wearing masks. Yeah, uh, the program for BOIC, we shall be getting up in the morning at 6 a.m. and having prayer together. We shall be having prayer from 6 to 6.30, interceding, spending time with God, you know, talking. Then from 6.30 to 7, we shall be having Bible study. It will be interactive Zoom, Zoom sessions, you know, studying the Bible, uh, interacting with friends and colleagues. Then we shall have our own time from 7. Uh, you go back to your work, to your school, you know. You do your activities during the day. Then we have an alert hour program running from 1 to 2. Uh, that, that's where we shall have theme exposition, you know, the theme of BYC, Growing as One in Christ. Yes. The theme will be exposed at the, on that lunch hour time. Then at 2, again, you go back to your, you know, you, you do your work, then you travel home safe. Then we meet you again at 6 p.m. from 6 to 7, where we shall have workshops that will have amazing topics. Yes. Amazing topics, yeah? Amazing topics, workshops from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. We shall have uh, people sharing with us, and they'll also be interactive on Zoom. Yeah, back to my colleague. Yeah, so we have a couple of topics packaged just for you, just for you this year. And the topics are purpose and identity, financial stewardship, education, and sexuality. Very important. Sexuality. Yeah, so right yeah. about now, we are going to go in for some praise and worship. Get on your feet. Praise and worship. Call your neighbors, put the hoofers on, and let's dance together. See you in a bit. Welcome. This is the very first day of BAYC. We are so glad and happy that we Woo! are here. Can I see you get excited wherever you are? We're going to praise the Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. Woo! Amen. All right, we're going to thank the Lord for today. We're going to praise the Lord. So get up on your feet and... Uh, Let's start right away. Amen. Yeah. Amen.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We trust in you. We choose to look unto you. We choose to look unto you, Lord, in everything, in our lives, in our finances, in our academics, in our families. For we know you can do it all. You are our way maker. You are our promise keeper. For you make a way where there is no way. Thank you, Jesus. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, walking in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, walking in this place. I worship you. I worship you. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are.
That is who you are. The great I am. There's nothing that can fail you. You are our provider. You own cattle on a thousand hills. You're so rich, you're so wealthy, there's nothing that can fail you, oh Lord. You are our healer, you are our provider, you are so great, oh God. Mighty you are, great are you in battle. That is who you are. And so I choose to trust in you. Even though I don't see you, even though I don't feel it, Lord, I know that you are working. That is who you are, oh God. That is who you are, our mighty God, that is who you are. Our great God, that is who you are. Our so mighty God, that is who you are. You are our great God, we choose to trust in you, oh God. That is who you are. So great, great I am, Lord. You're so great, Lord. You're so great, Lord. You're so mighty, Lord. Even when I don't see it, you're walking. Even when I don't feel it, you're walking. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're walking. Even when I don't feel it, you're walking. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, never stop, never stop. You never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working.
that is who you are that is who you are and that is who you Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Welcome back, people. Welcome back. I hope you, you saw that wonderful praise and worship session. Imagine having that for the whole week. Leon here again. Mirella. Yes, and my friend Mirella. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the praise and worship. Right now, we are going to... The theme exposition. And right about now, we are going to welcome Rev. Tom Othieno. All the way from Kenya, my Kenyan people, you're watching in. Yeah, our friend, our mentor. So get your notebooks and let's dive in. Growing as one in Christ, part one. Growing as one in Christ, part one. Greetings in Jesus' name. And once again, what a privilege it is to speak to you, um, members of BAYC. That is quite a privilege. We thank God for the honor. We want to understand a few things about growing as one in Christ, growing as one in Christ. Let us pray as we start. Heavenly Father, thank you for this word. We pray that you bless and be gracious to us as we understand this word. And may your mercy and grace be upon us as we dig into this word. We thank you. And we honor you for everything. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Well, for those whom we haven't met, my name is Reverend Tom Otieno. Um, I'm a priest in the Anglican Church of Kenya. And I've um, uh, been one of the speakers at BAYC for a good while now. And um, it's good to be with you, uh, even though not physically, but we are able to uh, share in the Fellowship of Christ. I'm married to Susan Otieno, and uh, together we have four children. Uh, not really children, but uh, children. Uh, Shekina is 16, and Shama is 14, and Dawood is uh, 11, and Shalom is 3. Together we love the Lord, and God is dealing with us through his mercy, his grace, and his love. And Church of Kenya Parish in Madaraka, Nairobi, in the Diocese of All Saints Cathedral. The Diocese of All Saints Cathedral. So we thank the Lord for the opportunity to share together. Now, I want to read from the Word of God. And uh, I'll read 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We are going to read verse 12 onwards. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 12, we're going to read up to verse 30. It says, for us, the body is one and has many parts or members, but all the members of that one body, uh, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free. And have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is one, is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? Um, if the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members each one of them in the body, just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now, indeed, there are many members, yet one body. 
and the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on those on these we bestow greater honor. And our unpresentable parts have greater modesty, but our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. And God has appointed this in the church. First, apostles. Second, prophets. Third, teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healings. Helps. Administrations. Varieties of tongues. Are all apostles. Are all prophets. Are all teachers. Are all workers of miracles. Do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But honestly desire the best gifts. And yet I will show you a more excellent way. This is the word of the Lord. And so we want to understand what it means to grow as one in Christ, to grow as one in Christ. Let's break down um, the different terminology because it's good for us to, um, it's good for us to have the same parameters, the same parameters so we understand what it is we are talking about. What is to grow? To grow is the process of undergoing natural development, the process of undergoing natural development by increasing in size and transforming in substance. It's the process of undergoing natural development by increasing in size and changing in substance. That is growing. As we understand that that's a general definition of growing. What is spiritual growth? What does it mean to grow spiritually? Spiritual growth is the process of undergoing spiritual development. It's the process of undergoing spiritual development that leads us to become more and more like the main substance, who is Christ. Spiritual growth is the process of undergoing development or transformation that leads us to become more and more like the main substance, who is Christ. That is spiritual development. So you can see that when you really look at growing, you're talking about a process that's already going on, but it's never complete on this side of time. It's always going on, you're always growing. Some areas become more perfected, better developed than others, but we are always growing. We are always in the process um, of growing and becoming like Christ. Now, what is 
oneness. So because we are talking about growing as one in Christ, what is oneness? Oneness is the unique grace of Jesus Christ. The unique grace of Jesus Christ. This is oneness in Christ. Eh? Oneness is the unique grace of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. The unique grace of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit that causes believers, causes believers from diverse backgrounds, and these backgrounds can be defined as ethnicities, nationalities, um, races, and personalities. Ethnicities, nationalities, races, and personalities. That causes believers from diverse backgrounds to be of similar and accorded, similar and accorded heart, mind, purpose, spirit, love, and service. It's very important to understand that that's a highly technical definition. So I'll go through it again. And we'll try and break it down so that we understand um, what we really are talking about here. I want us to, to be on the same page. So being one in Christ is the unique grace of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. So this is the agent of unity. The unique grace of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit that causes believers from diverse backgrounds, and we have defined the backgrounds as ethnicities, nationalities, races, and personalities. That causes believers from diverse backgrounds to be of similar and accorded heart, mind, purpose, love, and service. Now, please understand that similar does not mean the following. Similar does not mean uniform. Similar means diversities, diversities that are brought to work together in Christ through Christ for Christ. So the best way to define one in Christ is diversities that are brought to work together through Christ, by Christ, and for Christ. Diversities that are brought to work together through Christ, by Christ, for Christ. Now, so we cannot talk about being one. We cannot talk about unity without talking about diversity. Some people think that unity is about being the same. The same is not the, the, the same word as similar. Same means copy cutted, copy cutted. That is the same. The same is an assembly line with the same machines that produce the exact substance. That is not unity. For the same purpose, by the same person, for the same person, for use by the same person. Similar or rather different substances that are put together by the same person for use by the same person. That is unity. So, you and I are different substances, 
So the eyes are different substances. That's why we, they are, we are, there are doctors that just study the eye. <laughs> the nose is a different substance. That's why there are doctors that study the nose. The ear is a different substance. The brain is a different substance. The teeth are a different substance. But they have been put together, not by me. I did not put myself together. They have been put together by the person that put them together. In this case, the creator. He has put them together for his purpose. Now that helps us to understand what unity is. It is different substances put together by the same person for use by the person put them together. When you look at, for instance, a machine like a computer, there are different substances in that computer. In this case, we shall call them components, different components of that machine called a computer. Not one, not, not any single one of those components is the creator of that computer. The creator of that computer is always outside of that computer. And it creates every component separately. Then it puts them together. And each component comes together to support the other component, even though it's different in substance, it has the same purpose. And it is intentionally of different substance because it adds value to the overall purpose. It's intentionally of different substance because it adds purpose, or it adds value to the one purpose, adds value to the one purpose. And the purpose that is served is the purpose of the person who created it. So when it comes to unity, the biggest factor of unity is Christ. That's the biggest factor of unity is Christ. It is him who is served. But it is him who put us together from different ethnicities because that adds value to the purpose different nationalities because that adds value to the purpose different races because that adds value to his purpose and different personalities because that adds value to his purpose he put created those as different components but the body is one, it's the same. And it is him who puts it together, he's outside of the body, but he puts the body together, made of those different components, different personalities, different giftings, different anointings, different nationalities, different races, different um, ethnicities for one purpose and for one person, that is Christ. It's important then for us to understand that, that is the concept of unity. God put unity in everything. You will find where you have a lake, then the environment around it, you'll find good soil, you'll find a forest, you'll find a some good vegetation, not one of those things is the same, but they all are put together by the same person for the same purpose. They have called that ecosystem. That's just another word for unity. Go to a mountain, there's what surrounds the mountain and there's the mountain itself. It serves one purpose put together by a person, not the mountain. 
together by God, who is outside the mountain, to serve the purposes of God. Whatever it is you do and you think, God has wired the concept of unity into his entire creation, including you and me. And so we cannot run away from unity. You and me are unity walking on two feet. It will interest you that your one foot is not the same as the other foot. <laughs> you look at your foot, one is always bigger. <laughs> bigger than the other. You look at your foot and you don't have two left feet. Has it never surprised you that you don't have two left feet? But you need both feet to walk and to balance and to carry your weight. This is the masterpiece of God. Everything, different components, different substances, one creator, one purpose. This is important for us to remember that the chief component of unity or the chief um, factor, not component, the chief factor of unity is the creator. Create, puts different components together for one purpose. Let's look at other words that define unity, other words that define unity. Concord, that's an important word, concord. The word cord, C-O-R-D, just means agreement or coming together with one purpose. So accord, concord, you know, that those, all those are derivations of the word C-O-R-D. And you have words like conjunction, conjunction, coming to a junction that is uniting, conjunction. That's a very important word. You have a word like agreement, agreement. Another very important word to come to a place of saying, this is what we are about. This is what unites us. This is what is important to us. That's agreement. That's another word for unity. Conjoinment. Conjoinment. The chief word there is join. To join is to put together in a way that cannot be put apart. It is to join, it's to put together. So there you see several substances and a process of coming together or being brought together intentionally. That's conjoinment. And you have another word called merger, M-E-R-G-E-R, merger. To merge is to bring different substances and make them one. Not in the sense of looking like one, but in the sense of acting as one. And I want to make that distinction. Wherever there is a merger, the different substances don't lose their flavor, color, or distinct identity. They bring their flavor, color, and distinct identity into the common union, and it is that distinct flavor uh, and identity and color that adds value to the merger. Otherwise, it would not be called a merger if you couldn't still identify the different substances. It would not be called a merger. It would be something else. 
So that's why this is a merger. It's a merger because the different substances confluence. They confluence. And then that's, that's an important word. Confluence is bringing different influences to converge. That's called confluence. Is understanding different words brings a fresh understanding to this whole uh, thing that we are trying to understand growing as one. The other word that we use for unity is the word consolidate. Consolidate. To consolidate is to take different strengths and put them together and mitigate weaknesses using the different strengths. So we call that consolidate. You're consolidating what you have. You're consolidating what you have. The other word is amalgamate, amalgamate. That's an even stronger word. Amalgamate is to take different substances and melt them into each other without losing them in the process. Take different substances and melt them into each other without losing their unique substance in the process. Each different substance serves the purpose of the other substance and together they serve one purpose. They each serve each other and they all serve one person, the creator. And that's, these are important things to, for us to remember about unity. These are important things for us to remember about unity. Because unity is such an important substance, a very, very important substance for us to understand. Today, today we have a very interesting passage. And Today and tomorrow, we are going to break down this passage a bit more, and especially tomorrow, we'll break down this passage a little more. But we want to look at a bit of this passage and then we finish uh, this, the, the, the talk for today. And it says, for us one body, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 12, for us the one body is one and has many members. For us, the one body is one. For us, the body is one, sorry. Let me not be guilty of adding to scripture. It says, for us, the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, are one body. So also is Christ. These are deep, intense truth in that just one verse. It says, for us, the body is one. So even when you look at your body, you don't see two bodies moving. You see one. But the process of movement is such an intense and complicated process. But because it is controlled by the autonomic nervous system, which is the part of the nervous system that is um, that does work for us without us being conscious, like blinking. Don't have to think about blinking because the autonomic nervous system is in charge of your blinking. Um, like breathing, you don't have to think about breathing. The day you think about breathing, then you're probably not well. The day you think about um, blinking, then you're probably not well. 
And you find that this nervous system facilitates movement through communication from the brain. That part of the brain does not consult the conscious. So you're not having to think, now let me get up. You're not having to think, now let me walk. You just walk, you just get up. When you go to sleep, autonomic takes over, you knock out, then you wake up. We don't think about these movements. But the day you grow older, then you realize movement is an issue. It says here, the body is one. For us, the body is one and has many members. But all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. An intense, heavy statement. For as the body is one and has many members. Even me just looking at you, there are many things at play. Me just looking at you. I am one person looking at you. But there are many parts that are involved in that looking at you. My mind is focused on you. My eyes are focused on you. My hands, my body language is focused on you. My nose is focused on you, my breathing, my mouth. Look at that. Different parts, one purpose. That particular analogy that Paul gives is very important for you to understand. He says, so also is Christ. That is, Christ is like that. It's one, he has many parts. That's why this is the body of Christ. So we can think of Christ as Jesus, the person, but we can also think as Christ, of Christ as the head of the body. The head of the body, and that body has many parts. So we are all members, as the Bible says, them, we are all members of Christ. We are not Christ's, no, but we belong to Christ because we are members of Christ. So you and I are not Christ. No, I'm not Christ. You, you are not Christ. But you are a member of Christ. Member of means an important integral part, playing an important integral part or role in the mission and purpose of Christ. You are a member of Christ. Let's think of that and marvel at the architecture of unity that God already set out for us so that we can understand the architecture of unity. So may God help us as we understand this first part. We'll be moving on to the second part and the third part. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness. Mercy and grace, bless us, O oh God, as we continue to learn about growing as one in Christ. We give you thanks for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Welcome back, guys. Welcome from that session. I know you have been inspired. I know you have some notes that you've written down. Kindly tell us what stood out for you in the comments section, and we shall interact with you and engage with you. If you have questions, kindly drop them in the comment section and write about now. Yo, uh, so right now, right now, we are going to have a testimony. You know God does good things every day, on and on and on again. So right now, we are going to have a testimony from a, a person who has been impacted at one of the BYC conferences. Uh, it wasn't live, though, but it was beautiful for her. And uh, that time, we, we had no pandemic, but we are bringing on someone to share with you the experience and what God did for them, uh, Melissa Atkunda. Let's welcome Melissa Atkunda, everyone. 
Hi, my name is Melissa, and I'm part of the Disciples Youth Fellowship. I thank God so much for the Bogolowi Annual Youth Conference. I attended my first BAYC in 2019, and I saw people that had so much love to give. And I wondered, hey guys, what's up with you? And then I saw people praying. They had more to say than just, dear Lord, thank you for today. And I wondered what they were saying to him. So I just thank God because I wanted to know who this God is, and I really wanted to know, what do these guys have that I don't? Welcome back, everyone, from that wonderful testimony. I hope you have testimonies of your own. I hope God does something for you every day, and I hope it's significant. I hope you recognize it. Uh, so right now, we are going to let you go back to your day, but in the evening, like we said before, at 6 p.m., we are coming back for workshops, and we, we are going to have very many topics throughout the week, uh, but today we are going to have purpose and identity uh, with engineer Dennis Mugume. Please be there. They are going to be interactive. They are going to be beautiful. You, you can agree and disagree and, you know, discuss and argue. It's going to be wonderful. Yeah. Back to my colleague. Yeah, don't forget that our theme this year is growing as one in Christ. There will be Zoom links that will be shared on all platforms, so you'll join in for the workshops using those Zoom links. And then, a cheerful giver. Please support ministry. It's important that you support ministry, that the word of God will continue being spread all over the nation. So these are the giving lines for those on, of, on MTN. 0787-3489-31. 0787-3489-31. And those on Airtel, 0708-66-1470. 0708-66-1470. In the names of Raymond Mohwezi, please give and see you in the evening for the workshop.